Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming. My name is Kim Indart, and I work at City Network Hosting. And my name is Tobias, and I also work at City Network Hosting. Well, who are we at City Network? <coughs> we started at a small Swedish company based in Karlskrona, Sweden, uh, in 2002, and then it was mainly web hosting. And that's pretty much our legacy. Nowadays, we're running data centers at 30 different locations. Uh, in 2009, we started our uh, IIS service called City Cloud. And in 2014, we switched to run that on OpenStack completely. Uh, and uh, today, we are pretty much, I think, half, more than half our re revenue is based on OpenStack. Uh, shortly a bit about uh, <coughs> what we've done in City Network. Uh, we made a switch to be more focused on enterprise solutions. That's why we took a lot of ISO certifications. Uh, and I'm here by, to talk a bit about a case we encountered. Uh, you might get this question a lot. People tend to say, if you're in the healthcare industry, you can't utilize public cloud. If you're government, you can't utilize public cloud. If you're in bank and finance, you can't use public clouds. <coughs> and these industries are uh, very interested in scalability, flexibility, efficiency as well, and not to mention the cost efficiency they can get from it. So they are very interested, but a lot of people, industry experts, say you can't use public clouds. That's not allowed with your regulations. And that was something we actually encountered at a similar seminar exactly a year ago. So we thought challenge accepted. Let's build a cloud where you can actually have a public cloud that are compliant with all the rules and regulations. So we built compliant IIS as a service. Uh, we're focused on bank and finance, healthcare, and government. Uh, our case that we encountered was an insurance company, one of the largest insurance companies in Sweden. So we, uh, they have patient records as well as insurance records. So we got the big <coughs> favor of being regulated both by the bank and finance authorities and by the healthcare authorities since we have patient data in it as well. And we provide a complete uh, pay-as-you-go IIS, but it is completely compliant. Uh, we can just quickly go through, uh, we are certified for the bank and finance. Uh, now we are a Swedish company, so we are under Swedish authorities but it's comparable to different standards all over. The process of doing this is very much similar if you're in Europe, if you're in Asia, or if you're, you have the similar way of authorities, you have pretty much similar control mechanism. Patient privacy is protected by law in all these countries, so the process is quite similar there as well. Okay. Uh, a be quick show an introduction on what do we actually provide the customer. Yes. Uh, I will start off by describing uh, our infrastructure or the infrastructure of one single data center. Oh, was that direction? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is an overview of our infrastructure in one data center. Uh, we are running, uh, on, on all nodes, we are running uh, Red Hat Enterprise uh, in the bottom, and uh, we are all in Kilo release RDO uh, distribution uh, in all the modules, OpenStack modules. Uh, we have the compute nodes that are uh, running uh, Nova and uh, KVM as a hypervisor and the network nodes running Neutron, 
the non-distributed version of Neutron. Uh, we have the control nodes that runs uh, all the other APIs that we are providing. Uh, they're among the, the Keystone. Uh, when it comes to Keystone, we are using version three and uh, um, we are using separate Keystone for every single data center for security reasons. Uh, because if one data center is compromised, we don't uh, want to risk that another data center will be compromised since they share uh, tokens. Uh, for storage, we are using NFS that, is, uh, that has uh, extremely good uh, performance, but uh, even though the performance is very good, we are looking in, uh, for other solutions as well. Ceph, for example, Swins, uh, we uh, see that we can get problems with um, scaling and distribution with NFS. Um, we have chosen not to use Horizon uh, as a cloud management platform, uh, so we uh, have built our own. Uh, the, the reasons for that was flexibility. We would like to do whatever the customer uh, need to have and uh, ease of use. Uh, we sometimes feel that uh, Horizon is a little bit too techy to use for a lot of our customers at least, so um, um, yes, and um, I will try to uh, do a short demonstration of uh, this uh, cloud management platform. Let's hope the network connection works here. Okay, so uh, the purpose of this demo is to, just to, to get uh, some servers up and uh, be load balanced. So, so let's uh, start with, by creating a network. And please be a little bit patient if the, we have some uh, latency to Sweden here. Uh, okay. Let's start creating a network and choose data center and we choose Stockholm for this. Uh, here we have made it a little bit simpler than uh, in uh, uh, Horizon. We have uh, chosen to summarize uh, everything in one package, create network. So we create router and subnets and, uh, and all kind of uh, all of those things uh, automatically for, for the user. But uh, the advanced options are here if uh, you have that expertise. Okay. As I said, some latency. The polar bears yeah, are in the way. The polar bear. yeah. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, then we have our network, and we uh, more forward to, to just create uh, security groups. So we have the correct security for our servers from the beginning. Submit and uh, make sure that we edit in the same data center. Oh, that was quicker. And we move on to adding a new rule because uh, I was thinking that we were going to show a web page. So we uh, have to allow some web traffic. We have some pre configured uh, rules here that I'm using. Now the polar bears are in the way again. Oh, thanks. Okay, so now we have our network and security uh, group and rules. So uh, let's start creating the servers. 
we choose which data center to put them in, even here. And even here we have summarized the whole flow of creating a server uh, from Horizon into one interface and have made some things a little bit more simpler. And uh, we also think that it's uh, really important for our customers since we are running a, a fully pay-as-you-go uh, kind of uh, cloud. Uh, it's important to have the costs visible for the customers all the time. Uh, we boot from an image and we choose Ubuntu for this case. And uh, here we have implemented some packages uh, feature that are using uh, cloud in it uh, to uh, post install these uh, packages. And we choose LAMP here. We have also created a little uh, flexible uh, f flavor chooser here that uh, on demand uh, creates up a flavor if the flavor is not there uh, w when we create the server. Okay, so let's make sure that we add the correct network and add the correct security group and do some shortcuts here. Show them a bit the cost change, I think. On the uh, yeah, <coughs> that's correct. When we update here, it's automatically updated in the box. So that they, oh, well, latency. Uh, they always ha has uh, a view of how much their servers uh, are going to cost them. Okay, so. Did I hit it? Okay, so in a couple of seconds we will have uh, three uh, Ubuntu VMs running here. Okay, they are on the way up. So let's move on to creating the load balancer, which is uh, using uh, load balance as a, as a service. And we also think that we have made this a little bit more easy than uh, it is in Horizon. Here we have some advanced options as well if we would like to change anything. Uh, just make sure that we put it on the correct network here and uh, that we are assigning a new floating IP to uh, load balancer. And when the load balancer is created in probably a couple of seconds, uh, we will just add the service that we created on that network, so they uh, will be in the load balancer. Okay. So let's put them in here to be in the pool and save that list. And hopefully, uh, that IP will answer with some kind of web page. Oh, yeah, it did. Thanks. Uh, so I ho that was just a short demo. Uh, and I hope it shows that uh, it's possible to do things otherwise than uh, Horizon does it. And uh, this was uh, important for us uh, also since we are running separate keystones for each data center and have multiple locations in one interface. So, um, yeah. Thanks. Okay, and <clears throat> well, you might think uh, that's not something new. Other, peop other companies uh, do, of course, public cloud as well. But what we did was that we gave make a guarantee 
to our end customers that this is compliant, fully compliant with all laws and regulations they face. Uh, there is a bit of trickiness to making this, actually. Uh, we are right now betting our entire company on the fact that we can provide a fully compliant IIS. Uh, that's, I think, something that bigger companies have an issue with, because there are a few things you actually need to think about when making this compliant IS promise to the, your end customers. It's not you that needs to be compliant as a provider. You need to ensure that you follow the rules that will, are for them. Uh, to say this, <clears throat> we as a public service IIS provider have rules and regulations that rule us, but they are not nearly as tough as the rules and regulations that rule an insurance company. But we need to act as we were an insurance company in order to provide this compliance. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. This is why there are a bit of trick issues, uh, been in the media, for instance. This is a phrase I usually say, Yale's Trump, Trump's fines. And what do I mean with this? You need to have a certain type of organization. The data needs to be stored because a search warrant from the local police, and they can confiscate data. And the local police doesn't really care if uh, the data is from a customer abroad. They can confiscate it. But that's not all. You need to have the your legal jurisdiction of the owners as well. Because back to the fact, Yale trumps fines. So local law that can put you in Yale will always grant you access to things out abroad, even if you have an agreement. Microsoft has shown that this is a tricky part because a court in the US said you need to provide us with all the information you have in, the U in Europe. And Microsoft said, but we have a separate company in Europe. And the court said, but you are the ruling body of that company. You need to provide us that information or we hold you in contempt and put you in jail. This is the tricky part. And of course, it's not very the risk is very minimal that this happens, but still it's not within the rules to take this risk for these type of companies. Uh, you, we have the same with the legal restriction of administrators. We had a Swedish bank who outsourced administration to South Africa, and the South African government said, we have a search warrant, give us access to the bank records. And the people said, but we work for a Swedish company. And they say, we don't care. Give us access or we put you in Yale. And then Yale trumps fines. So losing your job or losing your freedom, you will choose losing your freedom. You're losing your job so, over freedom. So that's pretty much the fact we have. Then we have another issue that makes it hard for big companies, but that's accountability. If a nurse or a medical professional looks at your hospital records just for curios curiosity. They don't have a specific need to look at your record, a medical reason to do it. They will be severely fined or go to Yale personally. They're personally accountable for not looking at medical records that are relevant, not relevant for them. This is a fact that they face a personal risk by breaking confidentiality rules regarding your hospital records. If I am an outsourced IT administrator, all I risk personally is that my boss will yell on, at me because <clears throat> it's my company that makes, takes all the risk, not me personally. And this is why healthcare says that it's impossible to use uh, <coughs> public cloud. This is why we need to sign a, way, a waiver that all employees at City Network will face the same personal risk concerning confidentiality as an employed professional at the client we serve. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. We need to have the same risk and liabilities as if we were full-time employed. This you can imagine that going to Amazon and Microsoft and saying, we want you to take this, <laughs> would be a bit tricky. Lawyers would fight the, 
some time for this. But that's the way. Uh, luckily, I'm at the top end of the boat. I'm just a security officer, so <laughs> it will be the other ones. <laughs> now, then uh, we have, of course, something you need to think about more when you're making compliance. And this is the basics of information security, confidentiality, integrity, and availability are what all cloud providers do very, very well. They have an excellent <coughs> way of providing this. This is pretty much why you want to use cloud. What you add on top of it is pretty much a lot of logging because you need to have this non-reputability, this non-authenticity. Uh, you need to be able to provide audit logs that you can provide a forensically sound record. Because when it comes to bank and finance, uh, all rules regarding this has to be that you can prove that who actually said who and what to which individual, what were promised, what were... So what we need to think about in the infrastructure perspective is, of course, that no one is in and manipulated the records. It's just a sound record. So when the applications say, we told this customer this, and he acted like that on a financial advice, then uh, they can't dispute it from an infrastructure perspective. We didn't make a man in the middle possible. That's what our infrastructure needs to do. So from an OpenStack perspective, it's pretty much debug equals true on everything and send it to a remote log server. <clears throat> so we got this question from them. Is it possible to provide a true multi-tenant? Because our business model with pay-as-you-go wouldn't be possible if we can share the hardware between uh, customers then ah, <laughs> difficult. We, it won't be very cost effective. We can, of course, price it very high, but then we would be insanely more pricey than Amazon and the other ones. And that's not the part they're looking for it as well. They're looking for similar pricing models. Uh, so do we really need physical isolation for all these high compliance industries? The answer is in the rules that no, there are nowhere in the rules. And I've looked at a lot of rules all over the world. I usually say I'm chief security officer. That means I'm a rare techie guy who's not allowed to do any techie stuff anymore. <laughs> I'm just uh, allowed to read the rules and regulations from all over the world. Uh, but there are no rules and regulations to say that you absolutely need to have your own physical hardware for the information. It needs to be separated and it needs to be controlled so no unauthorized people can access it. So, what do you think? Is it possible to trust the logical separation uh, enough to do it? Would you do it? Well, <clears throat> I usually say my biggest argument is uh, it's always a matter of risk. No system is foolproof. And Actually, the laws and regulations tend to understand this. You cannot build a fully fu foolproof system. It's always a risk. Everything can be hacked. Everything can be broken. Uh, but if we look at the difference in the risk between a logical separated and a physically separated thing, we know that it decreases. KVM is getting better and better on security. OpenStack is getting better and better on security. Any members of the OpenStack security team here? No one? Okay. They're doing a good job. They're actually getting a lot better. Uh, the All hypervisors are getting better. The thing is, the cost of having your own hardware is increasing compared to using cloud. So we have one trend that's steadily increasing, and one th uh, trend is t steadily decreasing. The 
most important thing is use the money in a security sense in the right way. I usually compare it to uh, injuries in traffic. The most important thing of reducing injuries in traffic, it's not better roads and it's not uh, airbags, seat belts and safer cars. It's driver's license. How to reduce personal injuries in traffic, the best way is educating the drivers, by far. It's similar, you gain a lot. It costs really, really much to have separate hardware. And you don't gain that less of a risk. You reduce the risk a lot more by putting that money into educating your staff not to save their passwords under the keyboards. <clears throat> That's something, but like I said, uh, we are open for that debate, actually, because it's not been tested in court yet. So that will, see, will be interesting. If we look at uh, what are the attack vectors that you need to be aware of, that's actually, uh, well, something that differ if you have separate hardware. And the thing you're afraid of is, of course, the breakout hypervisor. Uh, the rogue VM, a VM that we don't control, that can access other VMs on the, on the machine. You can, of course, attack both connections between other virtual machines and the other virtual machines itself. And you can, if you can gain access from a virtual machine to the hypervisor. Because we are an infrastructure provider, we don't know what the customers are doing here. Uh, so we don't really un fully, can fully understand what are the customers doing on their own machines. And that's how it's supposed to be. But that doesn't prevent, that's the way that we need to really rely on the security of the hypervisor in order to <coughs> yeah, sleep well at night, pretty much. Uh, but the thing is, what we have done with our high security is to reduce the risks by having it semi-private. We don't take anyone in just as long as they pay with a credit card. We have a public cloud that's totally public that we do that but we try to be a bit industry specific. So uh, we tend to group insurance companies together, banking together, because then they share a risk and they have a common goal, not to post web pages that are abusive and will run a lot of DDoS attacks and these things. And they tend to know that they don't want to hack each other because that would be an arms race they wouldn't like. So we want to group them, they really share a risk. That's how you minimize it. And then we rely heavily on Red Hat and KVM, knowing that they have a secure setup. And this is what we use for auditability as well. We use the Red Hat's uh, templates for audits. So they provide today a very good way of knowing that you reach a good certification and some way that you actually can control this. So it's just a matter of, yeah, adding extra logging and remote syslogs and keeping track on it that you actually log what you need to do. Yeah, thank you. Any questions? So um, essentially, what did you have to do beyond vanilla OpenStack in order to be able to make that commitment to be you know, compliant and go to jail if it breaks beyond segregating your Keystone um, repositories? Actually, that's the interesting part. In the vanilla OpenStack, uh, there were, it's good enough. OpenStack is good enough today. So that's good. 
uh, the security groups are doing auditability, they're doing published security vulnerabilities, they're doing penetration testing. So we rely on the community growing and we don't see any trend that it will decrease in people. <laughs> so no, it's good enough. What you need to do is on the organization side. Sure. So you, you're sleeping well at night and, and, and you, you think open, OpenStack has your back, essentially. Uh, <laughs> I'm sleeping really well at night. Okay. Ask our CEO. You might say it's a different thing, but <laughs> no, I, I'm actually uh, I'm quite uh, safe. I think we're in good hands. Uh, I think it's recording, so... <laughs> Did you do something about patches, uh, something like this, uh, the continuous pa uh, integrations for all the regulations that, that we have to, to do for the vulnerability or something like this? Uh, yes, actually, you need to look at uh, the operating system on the hardware itself. So that has to be in a specific control mode. Uh, then we rely a lot on the documentation that Red Hat provides us. We're using Red Hat Enterprise all over and we follow the scheme and the uh, regulatory commitment because uh, the thing is that bankings and these things, they use this operating system themselves in their own personal infrastructure. So if we follow the same schedule and same processes that, as they do with that, it's, uh, well, <laughs> it's the same. It's uh, our Red Hat that is just running OpenStack is still a Red Hat machine. Mm -hmm. So the regulations are on the hardware and uh, the software operating system of the, of, uh, the machine itself. Uh, not that much OpenStack itself. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yeah, okay. Um, do any of your customers have uh, requirements on you to uh, encrypt their data uh, while it's stored in the cloud? And if so, uh, how do you do it? Uh, yeah, actually, we, uh, we encrypt all traffic. So that's done on the network level, of course. Uh, and we ensure that encryption. Then it's pretty much up to the customer. At the OS level, we leave it up to the customer. We only provide the infrastructure. So then it's to the customer that they want to decide is this data regulated or not that you need the, the encryption. But they are, uh, all APIs are open. So they can put up firewall as a service. We have a firewall image. They can put up a VPN if they want to. Uh, but that's, yeah, the customers themselves that need to decide. But all traffic between our data centers on the layer two level is encrypted by us. Yeah. A, a non question. Yeah. First one is the your clients um, buy this. Uh, I mean, in terms of are they comfortable with it? Do they just say, I know you need all the regulations, but um, I still don't care that I need to have a private, uh, separate network, separate. Uh, half and half. At least one big or biggest insurance company. At least them. Uh, trusted us enough with this. We are ISO certified, so we have uh, third-party audits checking that we actually live up to all the security standards we try and say we provide. Uh, then, of course, you need to trust someone. Uh, your outsourcing person is still a matter of trust in the end, a bit. So uh, this is very young and this is very untested, but I think the allure of having great flexibility, all these things that they're talking about here at OpenStack, and uh, hospitals and banks are crying because they can't uh, take that advantage. I think that motivates them as well. The non-security question was, you had mentioned that you have a capability for people just to uh, specify their own flavor, and you can go ahead and create that on the fly. Yes. How do you handle uh, efficient packing uh, virtual machines into the physical hosts? Or do you maintain a certain ratio 
when they request a new sense? Uh, good monitoring process, actually. Yeah. That's actually how it is, and some flavors are just matched with some nodes. So it's uh, quite now easy as that. Um, I apologize, I was not here in the beginning of the presentation. Um, can you summarize which security appliances are you uh, using and are you s offering all of them to your customers as a service which they can purchase from you? Uh, we're actually, uh, what we're offering is not as much appliances, we're offering uh, compliance with uh, banking, healthcare and government. And then it's up to us to have secure appliances itself. So the customers, they don't, they have no say in hardware. We, we decide hardware. But you mentioned that they can, uh, you can offer them like a firewall as a service. Yes, uh, uh, and that's uh, the different ways. Uh, we have one firewall service that's called Clavister, and we can offer the APIs in OpenStack like Brocade, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's. Uh, and the, the rest of appliances are uh, stuff that you use to be um, compliant, but uh, can you mention specific? Uh, uh, we use. Uh, a lot of hardware from Dell, and we use uh, Cisco. So that's uh, a lot what we build our infrastructure. Thank you. Um. Any other questions? To just say with hardware, uh, actually when we looked at this, all the big vendors have good certifications, good documentation, and that's what you need to be able to provide. Uh, and uh, uh, no one was uh, a lot worse or a lot better than other one. They had good, uh, they, the big vendors of hardware and service today, uh, there are quite few of them nowadays, uh, they have good documentation so you can provide it. They usually certify this with third parties as well, so uh, that's good, uh, yeah, for compliance. Because, like I said, we try to build our data center similar like the customer would build their own internal data center and then we can get by by their compliance rules. Hmm? Any other questions? If you come up with a more questions, we will be in the uh, mingle at the marketplace, I guess, yeah. later on. So uh, just hook us up then, or uh, take a card uh, here and uh, contact, contact us whenever you want. Thank you very much. Thank you.